Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jess and Paul Burgess, the great and powerful. Okay, and here we are with another installment of Solving the Health Puzzle. Why am I sick? The real reasons. Uh, today, uh, both Paul and I realized that um, it is difficult for people to understand the concept of what is really causing their illnesses. So uh, together we put a Venn diagram together and putting uh, that has the rationales. And uh, we'd like to share it with you today. And then we're going to talk about each subject uh, individually. So let me pop this up on the screen. Okay, because the fact is that most things out there that are not self limiting are complex and involve three basic areas. Okay, and it is difficult to do it on your own. So, Paul, uh, go ahead and explain what we've put together here, please. All right, so, so we will discuss each of these in the following weeks. Um, but I, you know, like I said earlier, I was sitting thinking what are the things that contribute to people's illnesses? And we have this cultural understanding that, you know, it's just one thing. I've got vitamin D deficiency. That's all I need to take. Or I just need to change my diet. That's what it is. And the, and the truth of the matter is, it's not the case at all. If you're going to improve your health in the modern world, then you need to know all the factors that influence that. And it is more complex than you think. So top of that screen, it says belief systems. And it's where your beliefs come from. It's what has influenced your beliefs, because your beliefs determine your behaviours. And your behavior will determine your outcome. If you believe it's okay to stay up until two o'clock in the morning and watch Netflix, that's what you will do, right? And that will present itself with an with an with an outcome at the end of the day. You'll either be very tired, very stressed, poor glucose tolerance, all that kind of stuff, right? So your belief behind something determines your behavior, which determines your outcome. So that's really important to look at. The other one on the left hand side, internal environment. That's the things that people generally think affects their health, right? So what's your gut health like, what your hormones like, what's your blood glucose like, all that kind of stuff. And that clearly plays a massive part, as well as what's the other stuff that's going on in there, the bacteria and the yeast and the toxicity and things like that. And then what influences that internal environment is your external environment. So where you live, is there toxicity? What's the pollution like? What's your food quality like? What the cosmetics you're putting on your body that you absorb all the toxins from? Have you got um, EMF near you? So you have like 5G uh, masks and things, which the jury is completely out on at the moment because we don't have enough data to tell us how good, bad or indifferent it is. But we know how fragile the electronic impulse between our cells is and how easily it can be disturbed. So when you've got something you're not used to, then clearly it's going to probably have a detrimental effect. So until you know all of these things and how they interact with each other, personally, I don't think there's a way in which you can successfully long-term improve your health. I think you can definitely do it in the short term. You know, you can have a better diet. You can maybe do a bit more exercise. You can get to bed earlier, and that's great. But unless you're taking everything into account and working on it properly, I don't think you can do it long-term successfully. And the, sorry, just the problem is mm -hmm. we accumulate all of this stuff unknowingly, right? We accumulate our beliefs unknowingly. We don't know what it does, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in, inside us. And so that's, some, you know, we, we accumulate those things over time. We certainly don't really take account of what's going on outside in the world and how that affects us. And so all of a sudden we come to a point where there's a symptom or a group of symptoms and then we go oh it must be just one thing what is it and actually there's a whole heap of stuff that all needs to be addressed so that's why this kind of illustrates that because whatever that illness is in the middle is an overlap of all of those things unfortunately uh in our society today uh we're we're constantly presented with quick fix solutions um that <clears throat> may give you some temporary or transient 
I'll say amelioration or or lessening of certain symptoms, but don't really address all factors that contribute to the end result, which are your symptoms. This comes from the belief that if I go after the symptom, that, that takes care of the problem. Um, and conversely, when things get really chronic, going after the root cause may be very good and you can eradicate it, but unless you fix the whole physiology, you're going to still have the same symptoms, even though you've gotten rid of the root causes. And, and a real great example of that is the belief that Lyme disease can't be cured. And the reason for that is once it becomes chronic and it does all the damage to the body, even if you get rid of all the Lyme organisms, that damage remains unless it gets fixed. And these other factors like pollution and toxins and even the cosmetics you put on your body or the stuff you put on your hair to color it, which are all filled with heavy metals, become the reasons that your system won't reset itself. Okay, but we're in a belief system that if we just take care of the symptoms, okay, your life is going to be a lot better. And frankly, that whole idea of, oh, let's just, let's just give you protocols that go after these fatigue or go after this, and this is going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread and so forth, is a great way to make a ton of money if you're, if you're mass producing stuff. But if you're ill, it is difficult to put all these things together and address them all at once and even just get these puzzle pieces and put them together. It's there difficult. That, that's why you need somebody else to help you with it. Jess, honestly, mate, I, I spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week thinking about this stuff. Quite <laughs> yeah, me too. Honestly, <laughs> mate, it's, you, you just do. We just, it's, it's you live this stuff because there's so much to think about, understand, learn, know how it applies to a particular individual because no two people are the same. That's so when, you, when you're running a, uh, practice with multiple you know lots of patients in it it's very difficult you, you you have to be almost switched on all the time and it's great because i love doing it but we're not even discussing some of the other issues that are going on like aesthetics plastic surgery that kind of thing how you know lip fillers or um breast implants or that kind of thing has a detriment detrimental effect on people's health because the promise of that surgery is instant gratification you're going to feel so much better tomorrow because you like the way you look right and yet actually it's never the way it works because mentally the belief behind it is you still know you're not the person now you're a false version of yourself mm -hmm. actually it makes you feel worse because you know you're still hiding behind something that's even more false than it was in the first place but all of those things not only mentally the beliefs but the actual implants and stuff the foreign bodies that are in the body those all play a massive, massive role in chronic illness long term. And, and we're not even touching on those subjects. So there is so much of it that's involved. And for anyone to think this is going to be a quick fix and get this done in a couple of weeks, it'd be fine. And once I've done this, I can go back to living my normal life. They're the biggest, biggest hurdles we have. You know, people exactly. need to understand it takes a long time. You cannot do this on your own. This is uh, what, what Paul's referring to, and very rightfully so, is that we consistently, we are consistently learning. We're consistently learning new things, uh, permutations of things we already know, and how, they get, how they're involved in various illnesses. Uh, just before this podcast, we were talking about lithium and its effect on GABA, on dopamine, on uh, glucose levels, on a whole mess of other issues. And we're not talking about lithium carbonate that's used as a, uh, for mental illness but various other forms of lithium and what its, uh, what its role is in various portions of health. Uh, this is something that, you know, we knew a little bit about and I knew a little bit about, but came across my desk. And once I start learning something or getting deeper into it, I share it with Paul, I share it with my other, my other colleagues and it's a consistent learning curve. So as we can, and we've been doing this for years, I mean, years upon years. So I like to put, I like to call them tools in my toolbox. Okay, so we've got massive toolboxes, all right? And it takes that amount. It's really easy to treat by protocol. It's really easy to say, do this, and I'll talk to you in two months, okay? But no one gets better like that. No one. And, and also, you can't have a, a cookie-cutter approach because not one single individual is the same. Right. Do you know what I get asked 
often, and I'm sure you do as well. Have you treated somebody else with this before? Yes. Right? A lot of people ask, have you treated somebody else with whatever it is their problem is before? And my answer is always the same. I've never treated you with this before. Right? I might have treated other people with the same issue, but none of them were you. So I don't know how you're going to react. I don't know what's going to work for you and what isn't going to work. So kind of what I've done in the past is irrelevant. Because if I was to say, yeah, I've treated lots of people with that thyroid issue before, it's been fine. That's, that's something you don't really want to know. If someone says, yes, I've treated everyone before, I know exactly what to do. Buyer beware. Because, exactly. because they're not taking you at your individual face value. They're saying you're going to be the same as everyone else. You're going to react exactly the same. Right. There's going to be no problem. And a really good um, example of that is, and this is kind of, I don't know whether it is a good example. I'm not actually more think about it. Patient I had, always had trouble getting to sleep. So the first thing you do is you go, oh, okay, why is that? Melatonin's not being produced because melatonin puts you to sleep. What stops melatonin getting produced? Cortisol and adrenaline. So you're stressed. Let's get your stress under control. That will increase your melatonin. You'll get to sleep. To about getting to sleep, not staying asleep. And then the next step is, well, we'll test the theory by giving you some melatonin. And you give them melatonin and they become wired. The opposite happens. And so you go, oh, hang on a minute. That doesn't make sense. How comes you're getting wired off of what we should think is more of a sedative hormone? And we realize that in their particular case, it's the opposite. So we give them, and this is something actually your son recommended, um, we give them a super potent stimulant and they go to sleep within 20 minutes mm -hmm. because it reacts a different way. Now, if all you do is know one thing, which is melatonin will put you to sleep, that's never going to work. For this person, it's, it's just going to make them jittery and um, keep them awake and irritate them. So you have to know that everybody's not the same. Things don't always work the way you think they're going to and that's why when we deal with somebody over a 12-month period we have so much opportunity to try adjust refine try adjust refine so that we get the exactly what it is thing for them to do and that's that's because everyone's individual our forte is treating the individual not treating the masses and individualized care takes time takes consideration takes thinking takes a lot of work it's it, what you see what we talk about here is only the tip of the iceberg of the amount of work that goes into understanding somebody's individual physiology pathophysiology what's wrong how and what is specific for them because the more you know about that the easier it is to go on the right road to fix it Nevertheless, over the, over the upcoming weeks, we're going to talk about each of these uh, factors at length. So join us for the next few weeks and really know what the pieces of the puzzle are and okay. why you're ill. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, if you are suffering, if you do have things that are challenging you or you've been, you know, you're on a journey that's really got to a point where you're really frustrated, where you've tried all the the normal quick fixes or you've tried all the magic potions or whatever it is or you've come to a point where the regular doctors and consultants and specialists haven't actually got anywhere and, you, and you've come to the end of the road um i would really like to talk to you jess would really like to talk to you just to see if there's something else that is being missed that we can shed light on because generally there is um, most patients that come to me and the same for you i'm sure um have already been through the traditional route of generally speaking else, and they've come to a point where they've not got any success from it but they know there's more to this right and so if you are in that situation you know you can get a free call with either of us click the links where, wherever you post this um mm -hmm. and and you can get on um and have a chat to us and then just see if we can point you in the right direction and that is a that is a, a service we offer so that Number one, you may be able to point you in the right direction, or you get to have a conversation with us so that we can tell if we can help you and you can feel comfortable that, you know, we're the right people to work with. And that's the most important thing. Other, other practitioners don't do that. 
and you may be working on what you see on their website and so forth. But when you talk to somebody, okay, uh, you have that feeling of, yes, this is going to work out or not. And we can look at, we can work with, talk with you and get the same feeling of, this is something that, um, yes, is in my wheelhouse and yes, I can work with it. So we'll see you again next week. Hey guys, take care. See you, mate.